camera's rolling. Oh, wow. You know, in 30 years, that picture actually represents what we tried to do in buying the team, that how often in today's world do any of us get our families all together? And that's what the Patriots, we hope, would mean to this community, bringing everyone together. And that moment was so special. My objective in doing this is to help bring a championship to New England. We didn't do this to be a doormat for any of the teams. I see my bride, Myra, smiling. She wanted to strangle me because I had told her what we are going to pay for the team, and we paid 50% more. And uh, it's the only time in my life that I think she doubted my business judgment. Wow. We inherited Drew, who had been the number one pick the year before. And he had an agent, Lee Steinberg. And right as soon as we bought the team, Lee was saying how Drew was underpaid. Bledsoe back to throw. Looks, floats to the end zone. Touchdown, the Patriots win! Drew Bledsoe's third touchdown! Drew was so remarkable a person and how he did so much off the field to support us. I remember Lee Steinberg came and visited me down in Cape Cod and we have a little hot tub and we're in the hot tub and we actually finalized the deal then. And we also were trying to make a statement to our fans we wanted to build a winner, and Drew personified what we were trying to do, and this is a great memory of that. Oh, wow. That was one of the most memorable days in the history of the franchise. Post 9-11, when we had these Andrewsy brothers, the three brothers of our guy, Joe Andrewsy, who were all firemen, and his father, that was a policeman in New York. It's the only time our fan base could really applaud New Yorkers, and they went out for the ceremony. We had had our game postponed the week before, and the spirit in the crowd in the old Foxborough Stadium was so special. I can still see our players coming out of the tunnel all holding little flags. It was a great, great day. What a wonderful memory comes back in that game and how special Adam Vinatieri was for us and the memorable kicks he made along the way, but probably the one that is the greatest kick of all time was the kick he made in that last game, the old Foxborough Stadium, for 45 yards in that blinding snow, the greatest kick of all time. And then, of course, we had the privilege when he came back later and kicked the game winner for 23 yards and got our dynasty streak going. What a magical moment. And to have the privilege of that happening after 9-11, just four months before, thinking we are all Patriots, and tonight the Patriots are world champions, and we're red, white, and blue, so representative of America and bringing the country together is a great, great moment.
Ah, uh, I have that up in my office. Time of tremendous celebration at City Hall Plaza. Only Ty Law can make certain things happen or say things. He had the ability to articulate certain phrases more uniquely and more spirited than almost anyone I know. Can I get an ownership? I own the team. I pay all y'all fools money. Can I get a little dance? Yeah! I have that up in my office. But he signed that to me. Who said white men can't dance? The opening game of Gillette, we had won our first Super Bowl. I believe our first banner went up. It, 21 days before, I had had triple bypass surgery and they told me I wouldn't be able to be there. And I remember we had a tremendous attendance uh, in our box. We had the Prime Minister of Japan, President Bush, 41 and the commissioner Tagabu at the time and it was a great memory for Jonathan and I. The first Taylor Swift concert was at Gillette Stadium. Never uh, performed in a stadium before. I think it was June 5th on my birthday, 2010. And that was the beginning of her stardom. They were afraid to play stadiums, and when they sold it out, that was the catalyst for doing it throughout. When she came here this year to the Kansas City game, we presented her a ticket from that first concert, and it was something very meaningful to her. It's wonderful, and I'm privileged that our family owns an asset that does bring the community together through celebrating music and NFL games. That was July 2011, right after Myra had died and Jeff Saturday, who led the union players group, he and Dee Smith had asked me to come back. And I remember Myra on her deathbed saying, they're gonna F it up, you gotta go. I didn't wanna leave her and I went and I said I'd go if they got the lawyers out of the room. I came back and were able to facilitate a new union deal for a decade. A special thanks to, to Myra Kraft, who um, even in her, in her weakest moment allowed Mr. Kraft to come and, and fight this out. And without him, this deal does not get done. Jeff was kind enough to give Myra a lot of the credit that had happened. AFC Championship game, I see Jesse and Allie, my granddaughters there, smiling, I love that. I'm wearing my MHK pin, and I'm looking up and thanking Myra for making sure the kick went wide and left. Oh, here we have the greatest catch in the history of the NFL, in my opinion, and Julian, was such an artist. What is that? A millimeter off the ground and that short catch, which was critical in our 28 to three comeback win. Throws down the middle for Adam, the ball's tipped, and Julian's diving for it. Did he make the catch? He, he did! Magical, thank you, Jules. You know, I've, I've had the privilege of bringing 27 missions to the Holy Land. This trip was very memorable. We 
took all these Hall of Fame members of the NFL. You know, one of the special moments, taking these gentlemen to the Church of the Holy Sepulchre where Christ was buried and also bringing them to the Jordan River and having them baptized. And one of these gentlemen came out and just so excited and said, this is a greater thrill for me being baptized here than winning a Super Bowl is a very special place and Jerusalem on the hill is a very special city and the thrill of bringing these individuals and making them feel comfortable and enriching their lives with a, an experience like this has been very rewarding for me. A wonderful after party we had in my backyard celebrating the sixth Super Bowl win. And um, wow, we got to find a way to have another one. This is another wonderful tradition that my wife Dana and I had a chance to continue. We've been, for 30 years, we've partnered with Morgan Memorial, giving needy families, uh, that's about 50, 60 pounds of turkey and vegetables for the Thanksgiving meal. And Dana and I enjoyed the last few years doing it. And I've had the privilege of doing it for 30 years. And it's a wonderful tradition. Thank you, Tom. Getting him to come back once he retired and letting our fans cheer him and honor him, which we did opening game against the Eagles. He gave a memorable speech and had his three children with him and we announced at that event that we were going to honor him June 12th at the stadium. And rather than a brief halftime experience, we were going to honor him the way he deserved to be honored. When you think about it, the NFL is 102, 103 years old. And we had the privilege of having the greatest player ever to play for almost 20% of that time right here in downtown Foxborough. I am a patriot for life. This is another experience that Jonathan and I have worked very hard for the last 10 years to try to bring the Army-Navy game to our stadium. And they've only, I think in the last 100 years, moved it three times from their little area that they play in all the time. And I'm happy to say they felt we brought a lot of special energy, fresh energy to this game. And you know, seeing this event made me so proud to be American. We really were mesmerized by what went on the field and what went on with the ceremonies, with the troops, and we stayed till well after the game was completed. It was one of the most amazing experiences we've ever had at Gillette Stadium and truly made us proud to be Americans. You know, I pinch myself because a little kid who grew up at Fuller Street in Brookline, the good Lord allowed me to own a team in my hometown. It, it's been one of the most amazing experiences of my life and our family, the Kraft family, looks at themselves 
as, as custodians of an asset that belongs to the New England community. And we're just trying to do the best we can to make all of our fans proud.